with a yo-ho-ho, -ho, it's Taylor the Toaster. Welcome back to Let's Play Inazuma 11 Go Light. This is part seven. And in this episode, we are going to learn about a friendly match that Rhyme and Eleven have been challenged to. So, Miss Celia Hills, who could that be? Which school are we playing in this friendly, Miss Hills? My, word travels fast. They're telling Ricardo and the others right this instant. Well, excuse me, why wasn't I invited to find out? I am on this team, you know. In two days' time, you'll be taking on Prodigy Grammar. So, Coach, have we got a score directive for this match as well? Don't waste your time thinking about petty things like that. Actually, Gabby, we do have one. Governor Goldwyn gave me this earlier. Score directive. Ryman Junior High versus Prodigy Grammar School, ordered to lose, nil three. So we have to lose three nil. Why do we have to lose to these pencil neck geeks at Prodigy Grammar? We could easily thrash them. Duh, they've been winning loads of matches lately thanks to Fifth Sector. The little swats are only interested in boosting their grades. Hi everyone, what's up? Haven't you heard? Your school has a match against Prodigy Grammar coming up. <laughs> oh, they are on a real winning streak these days. They haven't lost in five games. Everyone used to think they were just book smart, but it turns out they are uh, football smart too. Oh, sounds like that'll be a tough match for you guys then. But I know you'll come out on top. We'll be cheering you on all the way. Actually, as though you won't be playing in the match, mate. You're on the team. <laughs> they still don't get it. Why don't they look happier? They're getting to play football. They should be excited. I've got to go. Catch you later. Bye, Sam. Yeah, they really reused the name Sam, by the way. There was a Sam on the team in the first Inazuma 11 game, but this time it's a Sam Gook. Oh, JP, I've just had an idea. There are some really talented players living in Windsor Manor. We could ask them to give us a few tips. There's even a guy who played for Inazuma National, you know. What? Where haven't you mentioned this before? Imagine how good we could be if a former Inazuma national player could teach us some tricks. Let's go and find that guy right now. Now that is what I wanted to hear. Most of the Inazuma national players from the previous game are indeed in this game as grown-ups bet aged between 23 to 24. We already met Sylvia, but it's time to finally meet one of the actual players who is involved with the team. Now, we need to go back to Windsor Manor for that, which should be nice to see anyway, because I we were there in part one, but I kind of skimmed through it. I didn't want part one to drag on. But if you've made it to part seven, then you're probably going through the whole series, so I can take as much time as I want. Just get the picnic hamper out, sit and have a, a steak in the middle of the episode or something. So this is the, the Riverside Station. The station is must be a completely different area to where it was in... Oh, he's, his dialogue actually has changed, but we still don't listen to him. Yeah, we weren't listening, mate. I fully admit that. But um, we'll, we'll leave the station because that's not relevant. We actually need to be in Windsor Manor, of course, which is where Arian lives. We'll breeze past the park, which is... It's got some random encounters that you could be doing, but I'm fairly up to date on those. There's random encounters here as well, but... I'm not too concerned about my level right now. This guy's still obsessed with how beautiful Sylvia is. So let's just pop back in and see which Inazuma national player actually lives here. We'll follow the arrows on the bottom screen, which has a change since the previous game. It used to be on the top screen for Inazuma 11.3, but it's different. We we'll actually have to go through in the rooms one by one and find the correct one. They're not going to be so, so nice as to tell us which one he's in. Oh, hey, Arian. How would you like me push me where to? I had it done by a famous stylist, you know. 
I reckon Sylvia should get down there and get tarted up too. Make the most of her looks while she's a hip young funster. Be that girl. She shouldn't be tied down in a long distance relationship at her age. She should be out enjoying herself. Now, there's some truth to that. I would, I would never give anyone advice on whether or not a long distance relationship is a good or bad thing. But when that long distance relationship is with Eric Eagle, professional football player in America, um, okay, that door's just laughed at us. I think it's definitely worth it. Sylvia is chasing that green card. Oh, now I see what the the arrows was telling me to do. It was telling me to go up to the third floor. I might as well check all the doors as though it's Hotel Mario. I've started the job. And I'll finish it. But yeah, long distance, long distance relationships. My advice to you, audience, if you think it's the way to go, go for it. But certainly with Sylvia, she needs to marry Eric, take his riches, and get herself a green card so she can live in that country forever. Granted, she's probably eligible for a green card anyway because she lived in America as a child and that's how she met Eric in the first place. But she would definitely be eligible for a green card. Put it that way. Oh man, I tell you something, I would love to live in America, but I don't know if I could commit to marrying someone from America purely for that purpose. So we'll just see how life pans out for Tale of the Toaster. This isn't a story about my relationships. This is a story about Arian trying to find someone from Inazuma National. There he is. Hey, Mr. Banyan. Yep. They really did it to us. Out of all 16, 17 even, players it could have been. How many times do I have to tell you? It's just Scott, okay? Anyway, what brings you down here, scamp? Well, Bash, you're Scott Banyan? Wow! You played in defense for Inazuma National, and you were useless. You did nothing in the entire anime, and Tail of the Toaster kicked you off the team straight away. You'd better believe it. It was my genius that steered in Azuma National to success all those years ago. Yeah, we'll go with that. They actually gave him some height, which is quite nice. And we get another look at Whirlwind Force. He's not a bad player, and I guess it, this is the best thing they could have done with him. Imagine if we met someone really cool like Xavier straight away, and then Banyan was just in the story later on. It would be a big anticlimax. We'd be really grateful if you could show us a few things, Mr. Banyan. You would, eh? Well, if you want a quick way to get ahead, you should come up with your own special move like I did. Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Will you help us with that, Monsieur Banyan? Mm, maybe someday. Right now, I just want to get home and have a nice hot bath. I mean, I, I have just looked around your apartment, and I hate to break it to you, but... You don't have a bath. <laughs> I know that as someone who... Um, I, I do live by myself in my own flat. But I, through pure coincidence, landed the disabled access bathroom. I'm not disabled. I don't have any special needs. But just because it was the only one left... Yeah, I have a disabled access bathroom, which means I do not have a bath. Instead, I just have a shower above the floor. Literally, the entire floor is the drain. So, I'll take it, I guess. Then it's settled. These are the plans for our next match. We're counting on you. Right. We'll not put up much defense, so you should guys have no problem scoring. Oh, this is going to be great. I've not got any goals recently. I could really do with bumping up my marks. <laughs> and we all know what happens then. Sure. Goals make all good grades, which in turn has a direct correlation with the probability of me mum buying me anything I want. His name was Stein. No prizes for guessing what his first name was. 
Obviously, you can't believe a word of this to anyone. If you do, we'll be kicked off the team. Well, since we're doing you guys such a massive favor, you don't have any reason to mess things up, do you? You're not going to defend? Isn't that cheating? D d don't start messing with the big boys, kid! This is none of your business. Don't you dare blab about this to the others, got it? Not a single word! But you're cheating! Why? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing about evil characters. They like to sigh in the distance a lot. <laughs> uh, Arian, are you off to practice now? I'll come with you. Actually, I'm not going to practice at all. I was just going to go home. So, see you later. No, I can't say I shouldn't. After all, they might have a good reason for it. They might have a good reason for what- Oh! Okay! The guys from the footy team are really going at it, just look at the Virtuoso's face! I don't like the sound of fight, fight, fight! Unless it's Robot Wars and then I, I fully encourage it, and BattleBots, and all of that stuff. But, fighting in real life is a no-no! Advice from Tale of the Toaster. Lars, Sven, how dare you make shady deals with Prodigy Grammar? Ricardo, get a hold of yourself! I've always known you to only play football for the sake of your grades, but I never thought you'd be as shameless as that. Why should we be ashamed? There's nothing real about football these days anyway. He's right. You give it all that, acting like you're a superhero or something. But you take orders on the pitch, same as we all do. What? Shut it, both of you. <sighs> and that might be the last we ever see of Lars and Sven. Rick, you need to calm down. We shouldn't be fighting like this. I am truly sorry. If you don't mind, I think I will skip training today. And Ricardo left, but he, he's not quitting the squad or anything. Lars and Sven, I, I think that's it for them. Even if it is, why are Lars and Sven being so dodgy about it? It's like they don't want to win at all. You need to face up to the problems on this team, boys. Hey, Arian! Mr. Banyan? You should come to Riverside. I've only gone and found the perfect training partners for you. Come on, they're waiting. Well, well, if it isn't Scotty Banyan, he hasn't changed one bit. To be honest, Celia, I struggle to believe that you haven't spoken to him. Because you've lived in the same town and worked in the same area for how long? And you've not even seen this guy that you befriended as a 14 year old but anyway what mr banyan is suggesting is that we're allowed to play an 11 aside football match with him but because lars and sven have just upped and left and ricardo's also absent we've only got 10 players and we need another the way we do that is through a system called pal packing just um just give me a moment to collect myself. <laughs> That's what I think of pal packing. We've also been given a handheld camera, which we can use to take photos of things. There's 100 different hotspots across the area, which you can photograph. Why is this relevant to... <sighs> Pal packing. Let's see what it is. This is pal packing. We spoke to this woman 
in front of the football club and we have all of these players. We've got 386 points so we can we can recruit Tostig Muffler or Buzzcut or Fischl Bucket, Audacious, Motivation, they literally went there. Poindexter, who has actually had a canonical line of dialogue in this game, as the the guy who gave us our tutorial, and he's actually the guy, the only guy we've met all the requirements for. We could quite easily go and take a photo of the whiteboard, but we're already quite familiar with Dexter Point, so let's invite him to join the team. And that was it. It seems pretty simple. All we needed was a red bracelet, and Dexter Point is ours. But that is the easiest that pal packing is ever going to be. I hate pal packing. And it, I've made it no secret that Inazuma 11 Go is my least favourite Inazuma 11 game in the main series. I like it because it is an Inazuma 11 game, and I love all of the Inazuma 11 games, but pal packing, I would go as far as to say it ruined this game and the next one, and it's even in the game after that, but that never got localised anyway. There's actually a training hotspot here which we can use to buff up our dribbling, which I might as well do. We can even do it with Victor. So, yeah, sure, we'll try that. I don't want to bankrupt myself again. But naturally, Victor Blade just aces it because, of course, he does. Pal packing directly replaces the system which was present in previous games where you could simply speak to Coach Hillman or Mr. Veteran, pick any player that you like, and recruit them. Alternatively, in previous games, in, in Azuma 11 3, you could recruit people simply by beating them in a random encounter and then having them join you. That's still present, so thankfully we will still be able to recruit people comfortably enough. But what I liked the most about older games is that once you'd beaten a team, you could recruit them just by picking them and recruiting them. Pal packing is not that simple. There are so many requirements if you want to recruit a player that you actually want with pal packing. You, could, you may need one of the 100 different photographs which are hidden across the area. Arian's meant to specialise in dribbling. Why is he the only one who didn't do it very well? But, yeah. So you may need to give them a photograph. You may need to give them an item. You may need to be a certain level. Or most importantly, this is the main reason pal packing sucks. Main, most important players who you can recruit by pal packing in this game are accessible only by having other players on your team. And so that means, say I just want to recruit this guy, Higgins, once he becomes available, he may just say, in order to recruit Higgins, you need a photo, an isotonic drink, and someone else from the Inazuma Kids FC. Oh my god, it's Steve. Where have you been? <laughs> So this is what the Ryman 11 look like these days. I'm Steve Grimm, coach to these ankle biters. And I'm Millie Moonlight. I work as their coach as well. And I was horrible in the preview to this game, hidden within Inazuma 11 3. But yeah, in the next episode, we are going to be playing against Scott Banyan's team. But we'll just have a little speak to them for now. Come on, everyone. Just think of it as practice for tomorrow's friendly against Prodigy Grammar. So, they are coached by Steve from the original game, which is just perfect. But, that's pretty much my thoughts on pal packing. If there's more details that come up when they're relevant, I will drop them upon you. But, the sad reality is, the first three Let's Plays I did on Inazuma 11, I absolutely loved recruiting random players that I wanted on my team. Like, Aphrodite, and other people from relevant teams, like the, the Qatar player as well I loved adding to my team. 
as well as random such as pants. That's the unfortunate reality is I can't really do that much in Inazuma 11 Go. I'm going to try and put some random recruits on my team as best I can, but pal packing just sucks so badly that merely recruiting players is a grueling effort, especially when the items that they require are exclusively picked up as drops from random encounters, which happens in, I would say, nine times out of ten. I hate pal packing, but let me know in the comments if there's anyone in the world who actually thinks it's a good idea, and in the next episode we will take on Steve's team. TTFN.